Yes, <coughs> let's read some more. Or oh, never get finished. But then uh, I had to close my door. Uh, Blil Foods uploading a video. My living room is super hot. It's 31, 31 degrees. So I'm tired. <coughs> I'd like to stop this day. So for the like to finish this uh, seaplanes. Oh, never can finish. Let's read this. I never get finished with this because I was too reading about, about fighter jets. I'm not going to read about seaplanes in the next many weeks or ultralights. Oh. I like to get back to read uh, the fighter jets. But I like to finish uh, the seaplanes. But I need to do, I like to do some video on Danish, but it's so hot that my apartment every day is so hot and it makes me very tired and in bad moods. And it gives me a headache, the heating gives me a headache. Now my computer has crashed. But this is how my life is every day. So the computer has crashed again. But I'm not just giving up because then I should have given up many years ago. I'm not just giving up, I just start again. I'm not just giving up because then I should have given up many years ago. Waiting, just start again. Yes, I need uh, to log in. No, I'm not just giving up because then I should give up paying my debt many years ago. I'm not just quitting. I should have given up my debt paying on my credit card debt many years ago. So I have to, maybe I have to spend my life, the uh, rest of my life, I have to spend alone in apartments. So I cannot just give up because I have to survive. I have to uh, log in. No, I just I don't like just to give up and drink a lot of beers. I don't care about e e everything. <clears throat> I don't like to do that. I tried that many years. It's not uh, helping at all. It just make my life even worse and I will have less money if I start drinking alcohol. So, but one day I will uh, have some money to buy a new computer. I just have to lower my uh, payments to my credit cards. I made a plan for that. A three steps plan. I am on step uh, two. Need to lower my uh, shopping credits. No, I have uh, interest-free shopping credits <coughs> with a, a, a high fee every month. But I have it too hard. I cannot explain all this because uh, I'm not feeling well. Because it's every day is like uh, this. Every day is super hot and 
it's super hot in the night and I cannot sleep when it's so hot. So I need <coughs> I need a few minutes. I need a few minutes to, uh, to put my computer back. So that's just part of my uh, video. I like to continue because if I not do it now, I have to do it tomorrow. So, uh, now, okay, now I can open. It's not always working. It's not always working. My computer opened my documents again. But it did work now. But my computer can crash again in a few minutes. Or 10 minutes, you never know. Okay, this is a short one. We can maybe do this. Oh, stop, do this. Let's read this because maybe I can do it then uh, before 15 minutes. Pigile P.136. P.136 forward slash royal go Pigile P.136 L2 at Tanyumi Airport near Nami in 1989 Roll Amphibious Aircraft National Origin Italian Manufacturer Pigile Aero First Flight 29 August 1948 Introduction 1949 Status Example Still Flying in 2018 Produced 1948-1961 Number Build 63 Developed into Pigile the P.166 The Pigaio P.136 was an Italian twin-engine amphibian flying boat designed and manufactured by aircraft company Pigaio Aero. It is furnished with a metal hull, pusher propellers, a gull wing, and retractable landing gear. During late 1948, the P.136 prototype performed its maiden flight, roughly six months later. It reported my completed certification tests, clearing the types and trying to service. The aircraft was marketed in the United States as the Royal Gull by American distributor Cunny and Trekker. During the late 1950s, a land-based utility aircraft, the Pigio P.166, 
was developed from the P.136 and shares many design similarities despite the deletion of the hull in favor of a conventional fuselage dot development. During the 1940s, barely a year following the end of Second World War, Italian aircraft manufacturer Pigaio Aero, being keen to rebuild itself and its customer base in the post-war era, embarked upon the development of a new amphibian design. As noted by Aviation Periodical Flight International, this was no simple choice, as many aviation companies had been defeated in their ambitions to develop efficient flying watercraft and required ingenuity to achieve. Dot. 1. The design produced by Pigaio was of a relatively large aircraft, yet still being capable of operations from both relatively rough waters and fairly compact grass airstrips. Furthermore, Large portions of the aircraft, such as its three-blade constant-speed propellers, ways internally designed by the company. Two, during 1954, Francis K. Trecker, president of Cunny and Trecker Corporation, was impressed when he witnessed AP.136 in flight and offered to bring the type to the North American market. Three, a new entity initially known as the Royal Aircraft Corporation was formed to distribute the aircraft in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Trekker secured the right to build complete aircraft, but he typically imported partially constructed P.136S from Italy and assembled them with additional American sourced component sound systems. Around 75 engineering modifications were made to the airframe to better suit North American requirements. Dot. Three design. The Pigaio P.136 was a twin-engine pusher-type amphibian, being capable of carrying a maximum of five people with baggage, or a pair of stretchers and an accompanying medical attendant. Dot. One. While the general configuration and systems remained largely the same across different models, there were some. A Pigaio P.136 customizations present in the cabin to suit its customer and intended purpose, while military aircraft would often be fitted with alternative instrumentation and radio sets, as well as additional transparent panels in locations like the doors for greater external visibility. Civil P.136S would be furnished with more comfortable seating and additional paneling for sound exclusion and heat retention purposes. Dot. 2. The aircraft's fuel is stowed in two large metal tanks housed within the hull. Dot. 2. The P.136S pusher configuration confers several advantages. One of being that both the propellers and engines are kept well clear of spray and the cabin doors. Dot. 2. Cooling of fingers is achieved via large scoops located above the leading edges of the wing. After passing through fingers, this heated air is then channeled at the propellers to keep them free of ice, making any special de-icing apparatus unnecessary. Reportedly, operations revealed that even prolonged taxiing in tropical climates did not lead to any instances of overheating. Dot. Two. Another benefit of the aft positioning of the engines is that cabin noise is inherently lessened in the cabin, providing a quieter environment for passengers and pilot alike. The engines typically drove fixed pitch propellers, although variable pitch propellers were available as an option for greater performance. Dot. Four. P.136L1 During takeoff several features of the P.136 are to enhance customer convenience. Access to the cabin is eased by stepping on the spray dam set up on the chime. While a spacious baggage compartment is present to the rear of this cabin, some bulky cargo may also be stowed inside a large chamber accessed via a hatch located just after the wing. Two. The Top of the fuselage has four hoisting points, intended for use by cranes to lifting the aircraft. For ease of maintenance, only a handful of moves are required to unclip the engine cowlings to direct lie access the aircraft's power plants. A starboard windscreen panel controls all mooring and anchoring operations, while full nautical rigging and navigation lights are fitted. Dot two. The aircraft has a total of six sealed bilge compartments, 
which can pump dry via a single hydraulic pump. Reportedly, it can remain buoyant even with two compartments flooded. Dot, two, in terms of its controls and handling, Flight International observed that the P.136S boat hull makes little imposition on its flight characteristics. As a land plane, it behaves as well as any comparable light twin except that it pays the penalty of slightly lower cruising speed incurred by its marine capabilities. The publication also praised its excellent maneuverability and ability to perform a very steep approach. Dot 5. All of the flight control surfaces had a fabric covering, these typically being mass balanced. As common armanced flying boats, both the control wheel and pedal travel are large, aiding in takeoff runs to avoid water-based obstructions such as buoys. Dot. Four. Water steering is achieved by a large rudder that is linked to capable of the aerodynamic rudder. It is extended by pulling a long wire out of the cabin roof. Highly effective slotted flaps were positioned in sections on either side of the engine nacelles, full deployment of which rarely being used other than to rapidly decelerate. Dot. 2. Operational history. According to Flight International, the Italian Air Force was the first organization to place an order for the type. Dot. 1. During the 1950s, the Italian Air Force opted to procure a fleet of 14 P.136S, where they were used to conduct coastal patrol and air sea rescue missions. In addition to military sales, the P-136 also received orders from civilian operators. A number were purchased by individuals and private operators.